as we're in a huge unfortunate lockdown i guess it's fortunate in that it's keeping everybody safe but it means we don't go anywhere in terms of searching for video games so today I am dropping an absolute monster of an episode with some of my most prominent retro game hunts from around the last 18 months and I think that you guys that haven't seen some of the episodes are really going to get some value from this. If you are new here and you like gaming content, anything geeky, toys, consoles, arcade cabs, you're in the right place. So guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button because I'm going to take you on a roller coaster. We're gonna do this in no particular order. And the first one, I'm gonna to refer to my little notes, how very unprofessional, is one of my favorite I've ever done. This is from Lee's Deals 12 months ago when I was floored to find some of the most amazingly rare games and consoles I've ever found. Roll the footage. I need a few seconds of your time to tell you about channel memberships. If you guys want to become a channel member, click join from the main page or the second link in the description. There are three tiers, all with different perks for you if you want to become a team member. Thanks for your time. Let's continue with the video. Welcome to an absolutely immense retro game hunt right here with Lee's Deals, otherwise known as Direct Deals in Bradford. I have been teasing this retro game hunt for quite some time and already you can see why. This place is full of thousands upon thousands of retro games, both on the common front and the more obscure and rare front. And we're gonna take a look at this store from top to bottom. It is 30 minutes long, so I suggest you guys get comfortable, grab yourselves a drink. You really don't want to miss a single second of this retro game hunt, as there are some beauties in here, some consoles that I could have quite easily have just chopped my arm off for so to speak not literally guys of course but seriously this place is it's a mecca for video games of all generations super nintendo nintendo 64 guys here bought a ton of stuff so you can bet your bottom dollar that there's a retro game hunt uh, sorry retro game pickups video dropping and her gone on the super nintendo this was an ntsc release very very rare lots of bootleg copies floating about so be careful um as you guys can see that one was sun damaged a little bit i did ask what is the most rare game you have in here and that was the game that lee showed me now we've got a massive selection of sega dreamcast games here back down at the front of the store and i loved this because you don't see a lot of these titles around and the conditions were really great as well like usually with sega dreamcast and sega saturn um the cases tend to be a little bit disheveled, a little bit broken. Everything just seemed in really good condition. And in fact, one of the comments that Jess made in this store were, it's so organized. Everything was just easy to grab. It was easy to know where the Super Nintendo stuff, the Sega stuff was. Really nice condition. I think that, let me just pause, that is a replica by the looks of it. Um, it looks to me like it's a replica anyway. If it's not a replica, then that is bloody darn rare to find um, but yeah she kind of commented at how neat this place was um, and I love it I just wish I lived a little bit closer um, retro game hunting is alive and as a new year I just want to keep doing videos like this it's 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 a comment that I made to someone this following comment I said retro game hunting is a cross country um, hobby you know if, if there's something you want and it's 300 miles away that person you know me you you'll drive that distance and lee was telling me that he gets people come over from australia and germany i mean long live retro gaming guys i mean come on it's our childhood i'm so passionate about it and i i watch this back now and i say i feel overwhelmed now looking at this stuff so let's continue and uh, as always guys keep an eye out because i want you to tell me what you would have picked Now I went into this store not knowing what to expect 
um, and I definitely got more than I bargained for as you guys already saw in the introduction there was a boxed immaculate Panasonic Q I'll tell you more about that when we get to the footage um, as that is one of the consoles that is on my list to pick up this year that was one of my retro gaming goals that I spoke about in a video last week no actually it was this week so go and check that out it's going to be a fun year kind of searching for all this stuff but I'll tell you more about the Q as we go in now you've seen a couple of the Nintendo 64 stuff back then did not pick up any Nintendo 64 games for me they weren't obscure enough I'm going I'm kind of angling much more towards the quality over quantity um, and I didn't see anything there that I wanted to pick up most of the N64 stuff I have I would like the Majora's Mask there was a special edition of Majora's Mask released huge massive box and um, that goes for about 300 quid it's got like a watch in it there's loads of different things in it I've only ever seen one um, once and that was with Vintage Gamer actually through through his Facebook page actually so I'm taking a good look here um, Master System loads of Master System as you guys saw so from that one I did pick up the Virtual Boy the Donkey Kong Country Crate there was Hagan, Hagane, if I've, I don't know how it's pronounced, but it's one of the most, probably one of the most expensive Super Nintendo games that isn't like a promo or some kind of press release or whatever. So I'm hoping to get up there again. Don't know when it's gonna be, like I said, but I'm excited because I've heard that there's some new stock floating around in these deals. The second one I'm dropping you is something a little bit more calm and down to earth. I found a mammoth box of PS1 games for a bargain price in a charity shop. Now this is special because you don't see these kinds of deals in charity shops anymore. Typically you just find PS2 and Xbox games and 360 games, but you don't find big boxes of PS1 games. The bulk of the main charity shops have also been very well stocked because people have had those clear outs and I'm just taking one last look at the game guide you can kind of pick out different uh, graphic novels as well there were some kind of comic books um, on the shelf above this this is a really beautiful charity shop um, and I will be going in lots and lots like jelly tots so I'm about to kind of like stand up and I'm thinking yeah if there's PS1 games on the shelf there's gotta be PS1 games on the back look at this jackpot lots get what what and as you guys can see, we're going to take a closer look in these. As you guys can see, not only are there like top titles in here, but they are like they're in really good condition, like really awesome source in terms of it, the, the condition. And, you know, there's black labels, there's platinum stuff and Frogger. I mean, wow, I haven't like come across this kind of contraband in a charity shop for a flipping long time so you will hear my thoughts so please stay again to the end of the app because uh, actually pick up quite a lot on this uh, charity shop game uh, hunts there's way way more to see so i'm going through i'm like yo this needs to happen i uh i'm like i bought the whole box not gonna lie like kind of bought the whole box um and, and some of them are doubles and this is where i'm going to be giving some stuff away so needless to say i was a very happy lady Now, if you've been here for a good four years, you will know that I'd done a tour of uh, the secondhand shop in my old hometown of Alfreton, John Shaw. I used to go there as a kid all the time and I've done lots of different retro game hunts there. And one of the last ones I did, John actually let me up in the Aladdin's cave of the attic of the store where nobody else is allowed to go. So we had exclusive access to literally siphon and rifle through the boxes to find some goodies. We also went down onto the uh, first, first floor um, and found some wicked retro games as well. So this is the kind of stuff that you guys would see if you went in this shop. So we're going to take a look at that footage now. What an absolute Aladdin's cave of treasure this is.
Gemma here and back again for a retro game hunt and this time we are doing it very differently. We are back in Alfreton Sales and Exchange. Go and check them out. I will leave all of the details in the description if you see anything or you want here. So we're going to be taking a good look at that. You saw in the introduction some of the stuff that is coming up. So stay tuned, sit back, thumb that subscribe button and don't forget to leave a like. Now these kinds of retro game stores are like Aladdin's cave. You guys have mentioned it in because they're going to go up in value. Now we're going to take more of a dip in to this box here with some controllers, memory packs, um, memory cards for the PlayStation 1, rumble packs, there's a ton of stuff and I live for this. Here we go, this thing here, look at this, a four player Nintendo Game Boy adapter. Things like that you don't see around very often. Um, I don't know if it works because I'm yet to try it, uh, but we do find some more cool stuff. So I think when you go to places like this, um, the boxes where there's loads of cables hanging out and you can kind of clock the odd pads, controller rather, I think it's always worth having a rummage through. Um, you never, like I say, you just never know what you're going to find. It kind of reminds me of that show, American Pickers. Like the guys that just go out to random people's sheds and just pick out antiques that they can upcycle and sell on. Um, now I'm not in that market, clearly I'm a collector, a devout collector, and I love Look getting in this Xbox, three, uh, Xbox 360, this original Xbox. It was just boxed with wires, uh, no games unfortunately. And then I believed this was a Sega Mega Drive, I had to double triple check. I'm sorry I'm dressed like a bit of a tramp as well, my, cat, uh, my dog. I'd thrown up on me earlier. Pretty grim, I know, but I had to go home and get changed. So I was kind of in a bit of a rush before I got here. But I do love it here. It's my childhood retro game store. I'll always come back to it. I just have so much time for it. But it's about 11 and a half months ago, I took a trip down to Leicestershire and I went to a shop that I've only ever been to once. And it blew me away because it's quite a big shop with lots of different varieties of games in it. I really enjoyed it here, guys. Take a look at this. working and I decided to pay a visit, take as much footage as I could and bring it to served hot to you guys right here on my channel. So if you are new, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I will link the entire Retro Game Hunt playlist in the cards. Pick up some Wii games, very, very good prices. Um, Nothing like that was overly underpriced, I will say, but I was really, really happy with the prices in here. It was nice to visit a store that didn't hike the prices up for the sake of it being a retro game store stuff. And I made some purchases and there will be a retro game pickups video that drops on Friday. Also, there happened to be a CEX in this town, so I did a brand new £5 game challenge. Now, swinging back to Game World, we got the Super, uh, Super Nintendo, Sega Mega Drive, and Sega Master System stuff, stuff right here. Not much. One Japanese game, couple of Genesis games, the rest was PAL Mega Drive. Of course, we got the unboxings and a very, very slim pickings on the Sega Saturn, all of which manga comics in here. I actually bought three Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles omnibus and it was probably my favourite kind of surprise of the store actually. If you guys also kind of remember the Hyrule Historia and the Legend of Zelda Arts and Artifacts and the Creating a Champion books that Nintendo released, they had all four of them in for 10 quid each. Now, if you were to buy them from like the likes of Waterstones or on Amazon, you're going to be paying recommended retail price at £29.99, which for my North American viewers is between $35 and $40 per book. But in here, it was they were like 10 quid. So I was like, what? Now I own them all. Otherwise, would have picked them up. And the reason I picked up, you can just see them here. You can see the... Um, the right column towards the bottom, the three Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle omnibus comics, which I'm just kind of getting into. Now the UK went into the initial lockdown phases back in March, 
but at the beginning of March 2020, Doncaster Retro Gaming Market, I did a 55 minute episode and this was the last retro gaming fair any of us went to in 2020 because after them all the restrictions got put in place. So this has a special place in my heart. I picked up some great stuff, met some great people and I'm excited to get back to the Doncaster gaming market. So fingers crossed this next clips, these next clips give us a little bit of good luck for getting back there soon and safely. thing I would have loved to have bought at newsagents as a kid. I didn't pick it up um, because I just have so many magazines and so many comics here that I just don't know where to put them. I just don't know. Other than like, in storage, I have nowhere to put them and that's why I didn't really buy any magazines like I said earlier. Now, Another couple of things, um, kind of just looking at here, Reese is looking at Murdered Soul Suspect on the PS3, uh, limited it, and I did actually double take and think, well, do I own it? But actually, no, I didn't. I kind of got home and realised I don't own it. So maybe that's one for me on the radar in future retro game hunts. And in terms of 3DO and CDI games, there was a good there was a good selection and that was another good thing about this market it was nice to see you know some time for the more obscure consoles that nobody ever talks about anymore i didn't really see much description so enjoy a bit of Mitch Murder highly recommend him he's just some beautiful 80s tracks some awesome gaming remixes um, uh, and let us continue and think well do i own it but actually no i didn't i kind of got home and realized i don't own it so maybe that's one for me on the radar in future retro game hunts and in terms of 3do and cdi games there was a good there was a good selection and that was another good thing about this market it was nice to see you know some time for the more obscure consoles that nobody ever talks about anymore i didn't really see much jag stuff although I did kind of pick up an atari jaguar game um but it you know there, there was nowhere near as much as atari jaguar that, that compared to like 3do and cdi games so that was a nice surprise there was also a philips cdi uh, console that we're going to see later on in this video but what we're going to do now gamers is we're going to have have a little bit of a kickback and join another track from
game hunts, lease deals, rare games, you name it, we found it all here on the Gabs 24. Um, so again, please subscribe guys, leave a like rating right and share this video if you really wanna help me out to push the content out push a content stream this year. I love you guys. Let me know what you enjoyed about the video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. My name is Gemma. Have a lush day. See you soon.